Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa on Friday announced the much-anticipated economic stimulus and recovery plan for South Africa. Terence Screamer joins us to discuss the details. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this plan? Well, the background is a devastatingly poor performance of South Africa's economy. And uh, that's got a number of e components to it, but really it's been about uh, economic mismanagement over the last 10 years or so, especially the second term of the Jacob Zuma administration, where we've seen uh, South Africa's uh, sort of getting itself caught into a low growth, and at the moment, a no growth trap. So we're officially in recession. And that means that we, our government needs to take some actions to get out of this uh, recession, and uh, I suppose society has to take actions to get out of this recession. But uh, we, we also have serious uh, fiscal balance constraints. So we know that um, uh, we've allowed our, our fiscal balance to widen, or the deficit to widen, over the last few years, but it got to a point of unsustainability, and we're now having to come back and pull back on that fiscal deficit. Uh, if we don't do that, we've already seen two rating agencies downgrade us to junk, and the last one, you know, will do the same, and then we'll be officially fully uh, rated as junk as a country, as well as our debt has become uh, ri is, is rising at an unsustainable rate, and uh, so that is really the background to this economic stimulus and recovery plan. We uh, know that there's been a transition from the Zuma administration to the Ramaphosa era. There was the announcement of Sona of a new dawn, and I think uh, the, you know the, there's a bit of there's a lot of uh, jadedness around the new dawn, and a uh, feeling that maybe there's been a lack of decisive leadership in dealing with uh, the things that are constraining South African society and the economy. And I think this is one of the uh, steps that the Cyril Ramaphosa administration is trying to take to say that uh, say to South Africans that we are aware of the problem. Uh, we're aware that we're in a deep hole and that we need to start uh, uh, addressing that, that the problem from an economic perspective. Uh, and that's what the plan, I think, that's the background to why we're announcing a, a stimulus and recovery plan. Is there anything new in the plan? Well, in some ways, there's really nothing very new. I think what, what is important and what we should probably celebrate is the fact that it's, it's rational. So it didn't try and promise uh, sort of a midnight <laughs> A cabinet reshuffle or midnight uh, announcement around a, uh, a big funding for students or free education or anything like that. It actually, uh, what South Africans should take away is that it's really cutting our, our suit to, to the cloth. You know, we've got a, a very constrained fiscal environment and we've got low growth, but we do have still some levers uh, within that cons those constraints that we need to be pulling. And those really relate to the way we, we manage uh, our finances and the way we manage the way that that finance is spent. Do we get value for money? So really, this is uh, about pre-prioritization of the budget. Now, it's very s sort of, there's very little detail at the moment as to what that reprioritization means, and where uh, Peter is going to be robbed to pay Paul, because that's effectively what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to find areas with, of underperformance uh, in, in, the in the way the budget's being allocated and spent and delivered upon, and give it to those areas where we feel there's going to be, an, where government feels there's going to be impact in terms of getting ourselves out of uh, recession, getting the economy back on a growth trajectory, and hopefully then uh, dealing with the real problems of poverty and uh, unemployment, uh, which lead to this, this widening or so inequality scourge. So it's really a, a reprioritization, so therefore there's not a lot new uh, in the plans. What it is, is it's a shift in emphasis. So one, the emphasis of really bad policies, badly thought out, all policies that were being manipulated for a so-called agenda of radical economic transformation that wasn't really about transformation, but about a narrow, uh, enriching a narrow political elite, I think they there's a shift in, in focus. So where we have a visa regime that's been uh, very growth inhibiting for tourism, we're going to have a liberalization of that regime, what uh, the president described as a new architecture. And that should help um, in this sort of growing tourism economy of the, of the world. South Africa, I think, has slipped 
in terms of uh, gra uh, grabbing that potential hasn't really built on the, uh, the sort of confidence and the identity that was built around, say, the Football World Cup in 2010, but instead allowed itself to backslide because of things like visa regulations that are really, that really it's onerous, I think. Um, South Africans know how onerous it is to travel abroad, but I think for other countries, and where, especially where there's these new tourist markets like China, uh, it was apparently raised at the highest level by the president of China with Ramaphosa, how difficult it is for their tourists and their businessmen to travel to South Africa. So that tick, a quick win, and I think we're going to see some action quickly. The shift in emphasis around fighting with the South African mining industry, an industry which is, remains the bedrock of the economy, no matter whether we like it or not, no matter where there's a lot of potential for, for, for uh, exports and for growth, uh, and, and for jobs, uh, even though there's a lot of automation coming into the sector, to try and get that uh, policy uncertainty, that cloud that's been hanging over the, that industry lifted once and for all. So, and I think what we see now is Cabinet has, one, endorsed the, the new mining charter, we we'll have to see what the details are there, and pulled back on a very sort of growth inhibiting uh, piece of amendment to the legislation around the NPRDA. And then dealing separately with the fact that the oil and gas regime really doesn't fit neatly under the NPRDA uh, and have a process to deal with the a much more a nascent industry and help, helping that to develop through different legislation or regulation. So that's another tick and a quick win um, and we're going to see progress there. The third quick win on this broadband uh, allocation of spectrum that's been raised as a constraint by the telecommunications, the ICT industry. We know this, this is whole data must fall campaigns. We know that we have expensive data. We know that uh, connectivity speeds are not up to scratch. We know that spectrum is a scarce resource that isn't being, uh, being released at the pace and scale that the industry needs. And again, another important shift in emphasis rather than fighting, uh, starting to listen to what industry is saying and starting to accommodate that. And then I think in the more tricky area, of um, agriculture, that's an important quick win in terms of job creation. If we can get our agricultural production up, especially into export markets, um, and uh, that, that can, I think, start stimulating rural economies and starting to, you know, change. You know, we saw what a drag agriculture was on the GDP figures of the second quarter. So uh, there, I think the overhang, obviously, is the un policy uncertainty around land expropriation without compensation. And I think that uh, where all, all the other areas is pushing on an open door, I think the, the, the efforts that the stimulus plan is going to give uh, to reviving agriculture is going to run into that brick wall of expropriation without compensation. And it's all certainty is delivered there. I think they, it's, we're not going to deliver the jobs and investment that are envisaged. But the only real, n so these are all well known and these are all quick wins. But where, the, the, where there's something new in the plan is really a, I would say an off budget item. So we know we've got the fiscal constraints. We know that we can't take on more debt. Uh, so there's an off budget item in the form of the establishment of a South African infrastructure fund. Now, this is going to be a public-private partnership from what, from what we can see. Again, details are unclear. Now, we, we know that reprioritization is going to involve something like 50 billion over the medium term of reprioritization towards these high impact. The message that was given by the president around infrastructure is that uh, there's, a, there's a potential envelope of 400 billion. But I don't, we don't really know what that means in terms of the actual fund size. So the fund doesn't exist, needs to be capitalized. The message from the president is it's going to be capitalized through both public and private resources. And I suppose that means going to engage with the private sector. Where, the, where those power private resources are going to come from uh, is not yet certain, but he did mention the pension industry, pension funds. Uh, he did mention the banks. And he did mention, uh, this is not really private, but development finance institutions are playing a role especially the new development bank of BRICS playing a role in capitalizing this fund. This fund will be housed, it seems, inside the presidency and will be administered by a public-private type team of experts rather than a, 
uh, than just to say a government bureaucratic team. But again, it's not officially launched yet. We have to see the details. But I think it is a new and important element. And one where I think, I think there's, uh, there's strands that can be drawn from this stimulus package. Uh, questions were asked around the timing and whether you shouldn't have waited for the jobs or some of the investment conferences before you announced this. And I think it's really trying to crowd in uh, the goodwill that the pr pr private sector still is exhibiting towards this new dawn, even though there's a jadedness to it that I mentioned earlier, and a, almost an anger in some ways that not more is, is happening. Um, but there is still a sort of a spirit that we want to help, and then government providing some sort of, you know, placeholders for where this funding could go. So it's, it's a bit uncertain, as I say, not very much new. Uh, there's no new money, that's for sure except for maybe this public-private partnership and infrastructure fund that, uh, that will hopefully catalyze a whole lot of projects. Do you think this plan will stimulate economic recovery and investment? Well, as I say, I think what business uh, and sort of well-meaning South Africans must celebrate is it's rational. It's not promising something that we obviously can't deliver. It's within the fiscal framework. So if we had come with a whole big plan, we're going to raise a whole lot of money from somewhere or uh, uh, you know, rob, uh, beg, borrow and steal from um, uh, uh, international sources, it, it's, it would have been you know, fallen flat. I think there's going to be a lot of criticism of it because what is new? There's going to be a question about it. But I think it's really it's a, it's a shift in attitude. It's an attitudinal change that we're getting from the Ramaphosa government. It's not one of resistance, of clandestine uh, meetings, of, uh, you know, of lack of transparency or other, saying, look, guys, we've got a problem. Uh, we can't do it by ourselves. We can't go and blow the budget. We can't blow the deficit. We can't go get ourselves into more debt. Within that envelope, we need to be act more intelligently, act more collaboratively, and hopefully in that way reignite the economy um, it's going to, obviously it's baby steps, it's not a, it's not a big uh, uh, stimulus package in the traditional sense. In fact, probably using the word stimulus, would, uh, you know, it wouldn't be considered a stimulus package anywhere else in the world, but it's uh, uh, because of the lack of uh, new money. But it's, it's, a, it's a stimulus of the mind in some ways. I think it's, it's stimulating the mind of government, business, labor, um, to say, look, we, we, we're willing partners. We're not resisting uh, business. Uh, we're not resisting um, sensible policy. Uh, in fact, we want to be a place where the door is open to business and to, to new investment. Uh, let's start working together. I think that's it's a messaging more than an, a stimulus. It's a, it's a turnaround strategy, uh, very much bound within the context of massive fiscal constraints. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.